My name is Dr. Saita Klu from Adsa University, College of Health Sciences, School of Medicine, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. I'm an Associate Professor of Obstetrics and Gynecology. My name is Dr. Itwarak Fantan. I am from Addis Ababa University, College of Health Sciences, School of Medicine, Department of Gynecology and Obstetrics. I'm an Assistant Professor of Gynecology and Obstetrics. The purpose of this demonstration is to enable medical students to acquire necessary skills of obstetric abdominal examination as part of evaluation of a pregnant woman. Before we start uh, the examination, we have to introduce ourselves to the client and we have to also explain the procedure that we are going to do to the client. And I'm Nadaru, Dr. Sisai Balalo, Dari Lekatitulone Yemetut, Ngri Yesun Sun Huneta Lamauk, Hodole Mermara Nadar Garden, Mermara Hulet Dekas, Kasos Dek address if a gel, Menamayatama Mayamatam, Nice Sam Mautam, then Miss Sam Mautam, Kalaway Malam Machet, Inagunal Mermara Yadragon, Mermara Lamadek Din Machen, Lipson, Skazi Dress, Nikal Tulinal, John Dambo, Bagon and Abagon. Always before and after we examine a patient, uh, we have to make sure that we clean our hands. Now I will clean my hands using antiseptics before I start palpation. So we have to follow the proper cleaning procedures and then rub our hands and make sure that it's warm before it starts palpating the abdomen. We start our examination by inspection and uh, to inspect the abdomen, we have to stand by the side of the leg of the client uh, so that we'll have adequate exposure and uh, visualization of the abdomen. So uh, the purpose of inspection is to see if there are any abnormalities on the abdomen like previous surgical scar or any other abnormalities that can be seen on the abdomen. So in this particular uh, client, the abdomen is grossly distended and it is symmetrical on both sides. Uh, it moves with respiration and there are no visible uh, fetal movements. Stria gravidarum, pink stria gravidarum is visible on both sides and linea nigra is, uh, is visible and the amblycus is flat and there are no visible surgical scars. The second part of obstetric examination is obstetric abdominal palpation called Leopold maneuver. Leopold maneuver has got four parts. The first Leopold maneuver, the second Leopold maneuver, the third Leopold maneuver and the fourth Leopold maneuver. Before we start Palpating the abdomen, we have to tell the woman to tell us if she feels any pain during the abdominal uh, palpation. So uh, then we will proceed to the first Leopold maneuver. Before we do the first Leopold maneuver, if there was a dextral rotation during the inspection part of the uh, uh, physical examination, we have to make that correction. The purpose of the first Leopold maneuver is to measure the fundal height and to know what occupies the fundus. Before we proceed and do the first Leopold maneuver, we have to correct the fundus if there was dextro rotation of the uterus uh, during inspection. Uterus may rotate to the right side and make the fundal height less because sigmoid colon on the uh, left side may push the uterus to the right side. We call it a dextro rotation. That means a right side deviation of the uterus. If there is right side deviation of the uterus, we have to correct that deviation by applying a gentle pressure on the right side of the abdomen, like this one, using the dorsum of our right hand. So apply a gentle pressure. After correcting the dextral rotation, the first Leopold maneuver starts by marking the level of the fundal height using the ulnar side of the left hand, like this. Then the fundal height will be marked, and then fundal height will be measured either from the symphysis pubis using a measuring tip or from the umbilicus using the finger. When we use the finger meter to measure the fundal height, we use our right hand, the dorsum of the right hand will rest on the abdomen above the umbilicus and the thumb of the left hand 
which we use to mark the level of the fundal height, will be used to mark the level of the fundus measured from the umbilicus, like this. So the thumb of the left hand used to mark. The right hand used to measure, like this. And the remaining space will be measured by using the fingers. For example, this fundus is six fingers away from the umbilicus. That means four fingers plus two fingers. This makes the fundal height 32 weeks gestational age. The second purpose of the first Leopold maneuver is to determine what occupies the fundus. In order to know that, we fix the fundus with one hand and the other hand palpate to feel the content of the fundus. And we fix the fundus again with the opposite hand and palpate with the left hand. The fundus could be occupied by the buttock or the bridge of the fetus. In that case, we feel soft, bulky, non-balotable mass. But if the fundus is occupied by the head, we feel hard, regular, globular mass uh, occupying the fundus. After palpating the content of the fundus, we also ballot and to differentiate whether the, the head or the bridge is in the fundus. So if the fundus is occupied by the head, we feel hard, regular, palatable mass. But if the fundus is occupied by the bridge, we feel bulky, soft, and palatable mass in the fundus of the uterus. So in this particular case, I felt soft, bulky, non-balotable mass occupying the fundus. So the first Leopold maneuver shows that the fundal height is 32 weeks by the finger method. If we want to use a tape measure to measure the fundal height, after we mark the fundus, we use a measuring tape, non-marked side of the measuring tape, fix it at the level of the fundus, roll it downwards along the umbilicus, midline to the symphysis pubis and then read the measurement. Then it is 32 weeks above the symphysis pubis. So the fundal height is 32 weeks was by finger method and measuring tape method and the fundus is occupied by soft, non balotable bulky mass which is a bridge of the fetus. The purpose of the second Leopold maneuver is to know the lie and the side of the back of the fetus. In order to do the second Leopold maneuver, we fix the right side of the abdomen using our left hand and start palpating using our right hand the left side of the maternal abdomen gently. So we have to rest the whole palm of the hand over the abdomen, start palpating from the fundus downwards to the pelvis. And the right hand fix the abdomen and the left hand starts palpating again on the opposite side, the same thing. Then we'll assess the lie. The lie could be longitudinal when the long axis of the fetus is along the long axis of the mother, or the lie could be transverse when the long axis of the fetus is, is perpendicular to the long axis of the mother. Sometimes there may be an oblique lie that means a lie between the two. In this particular case, uh, I have appreciated a longitudinal lie, that means the long axis of the fetus is along the long axis of, of the mother. To know the side of the back, when we palpate, the smooth surface of the uterus indicates that the back of the fetus is on that side, where our side where there are extremities, both upper and lower extremities of the fetus, will be irregular. In this particular woman, the back is on the left side and the extremities are on the right side. Now we'll proceed to the third Leopold maneuver. The purpose of the third Leopold maneuver is to know the presentation, the descent, and attitude. So Leopold maneuver has got three purposes, presentation, attitude, and descent. So when you do the third Leopold maneuver, we have to 
face away from the patient and mark the level of the umbilicus, an imaginary line, and also draw an imaginary line from the anterior superior iliac spine. So at that intersection, we'll rest the whole of our palm over the abdomen and look at the woman through the window that you have opened between your left arm and the body so that you'll pick if she feels any pain and will proceed palpating downwards at the same rate and at the same level until we feel presenting part. When this is a cephalic presentation, we feel a prominent part on one side first, followed by the other side, the opposite side. Then we'll appreciate the presentation and the attitude. To examine for descent, we have to first identify the shoulder of the fetus, the anterior shoulder of the fetus, and the symphysis pubis. The area between the two is of, occupied by the head of the fetus. Then we measure the distance between the symphysis pubis and the shoulder of the fetus using our finger. Normally, when the head is above the pelvic inlet, the distance between the symphysis pubis and the shoulder will accommodate five fingers. We call it five over five. When some part of the head descends into the pelvis, then the distance between the symphysis pubis and the shoulder becomes smaller and smaller. So it will accommodate four fingers. With further descent, only three fingers. With further descent, only two fingers between the symphysis pubis and the shoulder. When only two fingers of the head is palpated above the symphysis pubis, that means when only two fingers can be accommodated between the symphysis pubis and the, the shoulder, the anterior shoulder of the fetus, that means three-fifths of the finger of the size of the head has already descended into the pelvis. That means the descent is two-fifths. When the descent is two-fifths, then we call the head is engaged and three-fifths of the head has already entered into the pelvic cavity. And when you do vaginal examination, we'll find the leading part of the head at the level of the scalp spine because the station is zero. In order to visualize what descent and attitude looks like during the third Leopold maneuver, Dr. Utbarek will show us descent and attitude on a separate model. Now I'm going to demonstrate the fetal prominences. So there are two prominences on the fetal skull. One is occipital prominence, which is found on the occiput, which is posterior to the posterior fontanel. And the other one is the frontal prominence, which is found on the sinciput, which is found between the anterior fontanel and the nasal bridge. Two of the prominence, if, whichever felt first, is called a cephalic prominence. During the third Leopold maneuver, if you feel the cephalic prominence on the side of the back first, then it is called an extended attitude. So as you see on this model, here is the cephalic prominence which we felt first at the side of the back. So this is an extended attitude. But during third Leopold maneuver, if you feel the cephalic prominence first on the side opposite to the back, then it is called a flexed attitude. As you see on this model, we feel the cephalic prominence first on the side opposite to the back, so this is a flexed attitude. Or during the third Leopold maneuver, if you feel both cephalic prominences on the same level, then it is called military attitude. Now I'm going to demonstrate descent. There are two landmarks that we use to assess a descent. One is the maternal landmark, which is the symphysis pubis, and the other one is the fetal landmark, which is the anterior shoulder. As the head descends, the distance between the anterior shoulder and the symphysis pubis will decrease, and the number of fingers that it accommodates will decrease. The last part of the Leopold maneuver is the forced Leopold maneuver. The forced Leopold maneuver is performed if enough information was not obtained by the previous three Leopold maneuvers. 
if you have already got enough information by the previous three Leopold maneuvers, there is no need to do the fourth Leopold maneuver. The fourth Leopold maneuver is done by using the right hand, the thumb, and two fingers in the right handed individual. We use our left hand to fix the fenders and put our right hand, thumb, and two fingers above the symphysis pubis and move presenting part from side to side. And we feel the presenting part. If it's the head occupying the lower pole of the uterus, we feel hard and globular mass. And, but if it is a bridge occupying the lower pole of the uterus, we feel soft and non-globular structure. If it's the head, then we'll further move the head from side to side to see if it's fixed or not fixed. But fixed head does not mean that the head is engaged. For the head to be engaged, the bipolar diameter has to pass the pelvic inlet and descent has to be two-fifths during the third Leopold maneuver. There are certain obstetric conditions when the fourth Leopold maneuver is totally contraindicated and also a uh, third Leopold maneuver may not be done. The last part of obstetric examination is auscultation. The purpose of auscultation is to see if the fetus is alive or not alive. And if the fetus is alive, to count the fetal artibit and determine the status of the fetus. In case of cephalic presentation, the fetal artibit is best heard below the umbilicus. But in case of bridge presentation, fetal artibit will be best heard above or at the level of the umbilicus. So on this particular client, the presentation is cephalic. So I'll put the fetoscope below the umbilicus and listen to the fetal heartbeat and count the fetal heartbeat full minutes in order to get a proper count of the fetal heartbeat. As this obstetric uh, examination is part of the antenatal care evaluation, after uh, the physical examination is done, we'll know whether the fetus is growing according to the gestational age. We'll also know the presentation. We'll also assess and know the fetal well-beingness by auscultating the fetal heartbeat.